welcome back to another edition of Silly Car Showdown. Today, we are taking a look at the ever-popular Toyota Supra RZ. Again, another car that returned to the game relatively recently, of course. Uh, Toyota finally found out Forza doesn't promote illegal street racing. Who would have thought? Anyways, yeah, uh, we got the Supra back, which is cool. I kind of like the Mark IV Supra. It is, by far and away, my favourite of the Supras. Um, you know, not my favourite of the JDM sports cars, that's still reserved to the 3000 GT, but the Supra is a pretty darn cool car, obviously massive following uh, for this vehicle as well. So yeah, let's get into it and start building up. This one should be pretty obvious as to why uh, this one is here. So, in terms of the car, we can do a few engine swaps. We got the choice of the ever-present GM V8, uh, Turbo Rally, the Trophy Truck engine, and a 6.1 litre V12, which I think is from the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR? I'm not actually sure. All I know is that's an interesting, weird engine to have the choice of swapping into this car. We're not going to swap the engine, though. Instead, what we're going to do is put a single turbo on it, because this car... Uh, the stock engine makes uh, power, let's put it that way. Anyways, we do actually have some body mods on this car. Again, we can't use anything where the aero is actually adjustable. Uh, to it, actually, I was impressed when I was sort of test building this car yesterday. Uh, Forza actually put some real effort into uh, the return of the Super. It actually has a bunch of uh, new, unique body parts which we never saw on the car before, like that AR performance wing. Uh, of course, I'm going to try and get the livery to sit on this car relatively well, which means the only thing we're really using that's new is this rear bumper. But, yeah, it's actually quite impressive. Unfortunately, they didn't add any side skirts either, so you have to go... Uh, you know, you have the TRD front bumper, TRD rear bumpers, but ev all of these sort of other bumpers are tuner bumpers, and the only one that really fits is the AB flug if you decide to go with those which is a bit disappointing. Uh, we won't go for the bonnet because it's hideous, and also it messes with the car. Uh, we will go for the racing tyres. 285s on the front, 345s on the rear. So we are going to have a lot of traction with the Supra, which is needed, shall we say, for, well, where we're taking this. Again, a snowy track in Edinburgh. So, start building it up. Uh, PLA actually hasn't shot up quite as much as I was maybe expecting. Then again, the Supra is actually quite a heavy car from standard. We are going to go for the lowering springs. Stick all this stuff in it. We never did stick a roll cage in that Mercedes now that I think about it. Uh, we will stick it in this though because it doesn't add all that much in the way of weight. Uh, S1 class, 833 pounds. Now here's where the fun begins, much like with the Mercedes. Uh, just watch the power graph shoots up on this one as we add little bits of power. You know, 20 horsepower apiece, not too bad. Exhaust stands 23. Uh, camshaft's going to add 288 horsepower. That's a fair chunk of power. And the PI certainly keeps climbing up. S1, 898, 899. And of course, turbocharger. 669 horsepower has now been added to the car. Uh, the PI decreases a little bit, but we're going to go for maximum power, so we'll do all that. And now, finally, we shall once again figure out our tyre widths, because apparently every car we're using has the tyre widths. Uh, the first one looks by far away the most normal, and on the rear, actually having it all the way there, I think, probably is good. 1,601 horsepower, 1,327 foot-pound of torque, 2,765 pounds of weight. Yeah, the, the Supra is very, very powerful, and actually doesn't weigh all that much. 3.6 seconds to 60, apparently is slower than the Rover, at 233 miles per hour top speed. If this can get traction down, this will be quick. The problem is whether it can get traction down. Sure, it's got three, four, five tires on it, which are pretty good, but I don't know whether that's going to be able to save the Super or not. Uh, that remains to be seen. Either way, there's only one way to find out, and that's by getting it to our track. So here we are at our Edinburgh track, already 35 laps with our Toyota Supra to see the fastest time it can get. Our current leader is the God TL Lotus Lease, a GT1 with a time of 1.31. 0.226. I know you think the Supra is god tier, however, compared to the Elise GT1, it is nothing. So, yeah, I'm not expecting it to beat that, but uh, this could still do pretty darn well. Again, we've got huge tyres on the rear, 
And uh, yeah, we've also got 1600 horsepower and more torque than that Mercedes diesel wagon from last time. Uh, let's just double check, because I'm scared from last time. Uh, we are making peak power at the... Oh wow, yeah, okay, we are definitely making peak power at Redline. So that's good. At least we've clear cleared that one up. Of course, this first lap doesn't really matter, so that's why I was looking at it on this first lap. We'll see what sort of speed we can get to down here. Uh, I can't quite remember what the record was. I think it was somewhere like 170 odd miles an hour. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is not doing too bad, although getting stopped in this probably more of an issue than in whatever that was. You know, we've had supercars and hypercars and all sorts of weird, wonderful, fast stuff, so this uh, again, 1600 horsepower, a lot. Uh, 2700 pounds of weight, not a lot, but we've got to get it through a rear wheel drive chassis. And also, you know, this is a car, you know, as much as people will tell you it is, it's not designed for 1600 horsepower. That's not what these are. 1600 horsepower is actually pretty hard. That's a lot for a Supra. Um, I think the joke for these is usually a thousand horsepower, so. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't know a lot about putting lots of power through engines and, you know, sticking E85 or jet fuel or whatever the hell you want to stick in them. But what I do know is uh, Supra is pale in comparison to those uh, Lamborghini v uh, V10s. I've seen those make, I think it was 3,500 horsepower. I think the Viper V10 as well can make a ridiculous amount of power if you uh, do weird turbo stuff. And again, a lot of ethanol, I'd imagine, goes into those ones. A lot of boost, a lot of ethanol. Goes into making one of those engines do a gazillion horsepower. Yeah, um, I admittedly, I, I'd be curious actually to see what the PI does when you try and all-wheel drive swap this. I can imagine it would be quite a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, quite a boost to the PI, I'd imagine. It actually, I tell you what though, when you uh, slam the throttle, uh, a lot of real drive cars really try to squirrel around. This, it spins its tyres, but it doesn't really try to throw you into a wall, it's actually relatively controllable. It's actually quite a nice car to drive. Uh, which, not massively surprising. Also, I just thought of something. We've actually had now, now that we've got the uh, the Supra, we've had the RX-7. I think we've had a 3000 GT go around before. We definitely had one in uh, Silly Car Showdown back on Forza 7. I'm trying to remember if we had one for uh, this game as well. I, I think we did. So, Ooh. We sort of instantly go to red line there. But yeah, no, a tight. Tr this on a top speed track probably would do quite well. I know it's the benchmark said it was 230 mile an hour top speed. I've got a funny thing like gear limited because again this will just be unlike that Mercedes, you know, which was nine speed. This probably just standard six speed affair. So yeah, this one making a lot of power. Or well, this one, you know, probably does need the gear ratios extending out. And on you know a car with 1600 horsepower, it's not actually that bad an idea to do. Because you are making a lot of power throughout all the rev range. In all honesty, this... It's one of those cars where... Actually, no, because this is a lot of turbo. Hmm. The twin turbo one, in case you're wondering why I swapped it to single turbos. The twin turbo makes 1400 horsepower, I think. Twin turbo... Twin turbo versus single turbo on this might be an interesting little debate to have. Because uh, on a twin turbo, you get a lot less downtime. So, you know, you could probably make it a bit more usable in terms of on-track performance but with a single turbo I'm not quite sure what's kicking in I could probably find out if I looked at the graph enough uh, I think from what I saw from the power graph though from uh, the actual tuning shop uh, this turbo is kicking in pretty darn late so yeah you'd sort of it, you'd end up in one of those situations where the car's just making no power no power no power all the power 
it all sort of comes in one big kick. You can't really feel the uh, the kick though. And again, I mean, we're sort of I'm noticing as we change gears, it's you know 6,000 RPM. So the turbo, I'd imagine, probably engages somewhere around four to five thousand RPM. Uh, which probably explains that. Also, 146.734 is quickest time so far. Which isn't bad. Nowhere near as good as that uh, Mercedes wagon, but... It, that was four-wheel drive in fairness. But yeah, I mean, in terms of handling and stuff, it's not actually that bad. Uh, the tyres probably being massive help this thing. <laughs> I almost would say I'd kind of like a wide body just so you could make the tyres even bigger. I could imagine this thing, you know, with a wide body, you'd probably be able to chunk, what, 305s on the front? I think we're on 295s at the moment, so. Yeah, so if you beef those up to, I don't know, let's say 325, 335, and the rear tyres up to like 395, you'd probably have one hell of a handling machine. And again, you know, I don't know what this would be like with a wheel drive, probably understeery, but still probably very very quick indeed we'll go to first gear and see yeah I mean even first gear don't get me wrong I'm being very tentative on the throttle but now that I slam it uh, there's a bit of wheel spin but it's not too bad you know it's certainly it's got a lot of poke and it's got a lot of um... yeah it, it can go without causing too much of a fuss, which is nice. Which is very nice. 146, 307. Final lap, let's see what we can get out of the Supra. See what it's like when you push it. Try not to get any of the weird hops that we see down there. That probably wasn't that good, but I don't... If it's the rear of the car hitting, it's probably not costing us that much time. It's these sort of first sections that will really catch this car out. Because again, while the power delivery is fine, it's still a rear wheel drive sports car. Uh, and they really do struggle around those first bits. Unless you absolutely nail them. And uh, yeah, in this, I don't think it's... It's not really a precision, uh, a precision piece of kit. I don't think anything here today really has been. So... Yeah, it's hardly like we're dealing with uh, a bona fide race car here. Although the livery may lead you to uh, believe on that one. I don't think that was... Yeah, no, that was a really poor corner. I don't think we're going to go any quicker on this one, but... In fairness, a 146.3 is hardly a bad time. Uh, considering this track. There we go. Coming around this final bit then. If it straightens out, no. 1.46.307 is the final time for the Toyota Supra. Let's actually see when this turbo kicks in. Oh, okay, it actually kicks in pretty low down. Or does it? Hold on. Yeah, no, that's actually pretty all right. So, 146.307 is the time on the Supra. Lots of biddings. Uh, it goes, okay, that's interesting. Goes into 31st place. Goes in between the... I'm so sorry for your ears. Uh, it goes in between the GT40 EcoBoost and the Nismo GTR LM. So, yeah, another JDM classic. Jesus Christ. Another JDM classic. We have the Viper Box Mustang. Beats out the Evo 9. Uh, Lotus Carlton V10. Beats out the RX-8. Beats out the RX-7 V8. Beats out the Nissan 4 Rotor. Uh, another RX-7, trying to see what else is on here. Is there anything JDM that it got beaten by? Uh, the Nissan Sylvia muscle car, uh, a couple of the Impreza's, NSX's. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, the R33 Skyline. Yeah, I guess that one's a given though, because that's all-wheel drive. 
Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what this is like with all-wheel drive, actually, if I'm being honest. But, uh, yeah, not a bad car to drive, certainly. Not as scary as 1,600 horsepower in a rear-wheel drive sports car uh, would lead you to believe. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, and, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Until next time, farewell. Dreams are going